Uh, hi, thank you for uh, joining us here today and also thank you to uh, Beef and Lamb to uh, inviting us. So today, um, this is about us sharing our story. Um, it may not spin everyone's wheels, but that's okay. But we're sure there is a potential opportunity out there for those who have a, a curious mind about data and, and what it can do. Um, we also believe that it's all about sharing, sharing the good things when they work and also <laughs> equally not being afraid of sharing when the shite happens and being okay about talking about that one as well. So uh, just briefly, in 2007, we were introduced to uh, EID tags. Um, little did we realise we had just entered into a 10-year relationship, a 10-year love-hate relationship with this uh, technology. Uh, in 2007 to 2010, we were invited to be part of the PharmIQ development team. That was uh, quite an experience itself when you've got a bunch of IT guys and a bunch of farmers trying to communicate. And um, then in 2010, we were asked to be the uh, monitor farm for the Upper South Island for Farm IQ. Uh, so just briefly sort of setting the scene. Um, so 2007, for three years, we sort of fluffed around with this data, not really knowing what the hell it was, what we wanted to do with it. And then in um, 2010, it was like, right, we actually need to get real with this. And, and we were starting to understand that um, this could be a game changer for us and our businesses. So we sat down and we really got true with ourselves and we identified what our strengths and weaknesses were within our farming operation. We also uh, sat down and created a steering group committee around us, which included um, our vet, our bank manager, our agronomist, um, a, a raft of people that we felt were instrumental in our business as well. We went through and, re and reviewed um, our financials to see also our strengths and weaknesses. And we sat down and we created quite a comprehensive monitoring system that we were gonna go forth with. And that basically went right back to the basics of farming for us, which was the three fundamentals, conception, survivability, and growth rates. And then on top of that, um, we started to get real about our feed budgets, feed budgets as well. And the biggest one is what were we wanting to achieve and what will our goal, what were our goals going forward? So we sat down and um, we decided what data we were gonna collect. Um, by this stage, we'd, all our ewes had been EID tagged and we'd come to the conclusion that, conclusion that weaning uh, was going to be the start, not the finish in our business. So at conception, um, the data that we recorded was the body condition, sorry, the body condition score of ewes at weaning six weeks pre-mate and at mating. We also recorded data of the body weight of the two deaths and hoggets at weaning, six weeks pre-mate and mating. The survivability data that we wanted to capture was the scanning and then uh, the tailing and mob scenarios, which equates to the number of lambs alive. And then the growth rates uh, was at tailing, which is when the um, animal gets all its life data. We started with a base weight there. Um, they got growth rates at pre wean drench if they needed it, and then again at weaning. The land data we decided to collect, um, we got a comprehensive fa farm map done that was GPS, so we knew exactly what area was in these paddocks, how many paddocks. We collected um, grass growth for three years through the cages and plate metering. 
Um, we also had tried various pasture versus lamb growth rate trials. Uh, we implemented three moisture uh, strips into our three distinctive soil tops within the farm. We were recording all our land-based activities, our, all our furt, our drilling, our spraying, anything that, was, um, that we did on land was recorded. We also, Dunk's a very strong believer in the uh, um, eye monitor, I think he calls it, actually doing the walk over your farm. And we decided to incorporate that with our uh, paddocks. They were put into a one to five criteria um, about how we were going to go forward with pasture renewal. And then, yeah, we used the Farm IQ land management for all our compliance and budgeting on top of that as well. So with all that, we sat down and we created a mission statement. I'm a person who, who likes a clear sense of knowing where I'm going. Um, so our mission statement was to create a robust farming system through matching livestock polities with land class types, which in turn will create a clear sense of planning and direction. So for today, we're just going to focus on one thing each from the stock side and one from the land side to keep it simple because we did collect a lot of data over that time. So one of the weaknesses that we identified was our lambing percentage. It was failing um, in our income potential and we also felt that that was probably the lowest hanging fruit that we could um, really target and, and it was turning that weakness into a positive. So at 2011, we had 154% scanning. We run uh, Focus Genetic, what originally were Lamb, Lamb Supreme and Lamb Mark. Um, we still run the, that breed of sheep now. And in 2011 as well, we were tailing 110% and um, mating zero hoggets. So for us, it was as poor, to be honest, and it was time to take ownership of that. Um, so, yeah, like Tina said, that was um, a real low-hanging fruit for us. There was certainly opportunity there. And um, so we don't have fear of getting bogged down in graphs and all the rest of it. I have just selected a few, you know, through that journey. Um, and one of the biggest ones here is is we, very early on, we were weighing ewes and getting weights and um, and then obviously scanning and reflecting back to weights versus scanning. But, um, so this was sort of when condition score was really just starting to get talked about. And in that same year, we, we did... Um, condition scoring of the ewes as well as live weight of the ewes because we wanted to just see how powerful the um, condition score really was. So in the, in the uh, your left hand graph there um, along the bottom line is the condition score of the ewes, up the left hand column is the um, percentage of in lamb and then out on the right is, is the numbers. So it was, it was pretty um, tight sort of bell-shaped graph there in the red. Um, and from that, within our flock, we could work out what condition score the ewes um, sort of were peaking at to get the best efficiency out of the scan. Um, but in the same time, we worked out the um, body weight, physical body weight. And you can see there in the red that the, the bell shape was pretty flat. Um, so on the relativity of it was about 64 percent, 69% as opposed to condition scoring, so at 94. So out went the door of live weight. So this is um, 2007, 12 years ago. Um, so out the door went live weight weighing and income condition scoring. We got pretty worked up about this as we were condition scoring everyone. Is that a 3.1 or a 3.2? Um, that lasted for about one, two years, and we were recording that, but then it, it fell into the situation of, no, it is just, it needs a feed or it doesn't. We wanted to make it simple. 
but we knew we sort of calibrated ourselves for about that 3.2 condition score. Um, and then this graph here is for the hoggets. So we started mating hoggets then. Um, and as you do, you get all pretty excited about it and just want to mate everything. Um, and, but we, we measured that as well um, on weights. So this is, I will stress, this is within your own flock. You know, you, there's variabilities there. Um, so we weighed all the hoggets, we got the scanning percentages, and we then asked ourselves the question, you know, what weight, I mean, what scanning percent do we actually want to get out of our hoggets? Like, are we pushing it to the nth, or are we, what are we doing there? So we sort of worked on about 100%, we'd be happy with 120. And as you can see there, you know, the, the, and this had a 97% relativity, you know, anything sort of in around that 42 kilos would give us 100% scanning. And up to 46 is where we sort of aim at, at 120. Um, so there's some pretty powerful information there. Um, so that sort of gave us a target to shoot at, you know, in, in relation to from weaning through to mating. Um, and so to speed all that up, um, all our ewes, like Tina said, were EID'd. We created an A and B flock. We wanted to know what the, the best performing ewes were in the, in the flock so we could replace, you know, get our replacement ewe lambs from within those ewes. Um, so on the Farm IQ um, system, I've just taken this as, a, as an example. Um, it's a 2011 born ewe, and this is in 2016. And what and traditionally we've always well we would already always had put our old ewes to a terminal ram, but we saw opportunity there to utilise some high performing ewes. Um, so what we did there was um, we said in the system that she had to down the on the second to bottom line where you can see the three dots and then out to the right um, that she had to have lambed as a hoggett. The following year she. Going up the screen, she had to lamb a, at least a twin, and then a, I mean scanned a twin, and then so forth right up until the current year. So if she had done that, she come she stayed in the A flock. Um, it was a policy of if they're in the B flock, they never come back. Um, so that sort of brought about minimum numbers of ewes that we needed um, to mate to the maternal. So we could, we could utilise all the rest of the ewes to the terminal. We weren't just sort of saying, OK, let's just put all these ewes out in the maternal and hopefully we'll get enough lambs out of them. Like, we were quite strategic about it. Um, so then we could reverse engineer it. And if we needed, say, 900 hoggets, um, and we were, by this stage we were starting to sell replacement ewe lambs as well, so we'd forward book orders for a year in advance, and um, if we needed yeah, like 900 ewe lambs as replacements, we were pretty sure we're getting 150%. We could reverse engineer that, and then come out with the number of ewes that we needed, um, but also gave us a wee bit of room for um, selection pressure. <coughs> we didn't take into account um, snowstorms, weather events, but we felt that we're, you know, that that, hap that was going to happen anyway, you know, with, with, no matter which way you went. Um, so yeah, that was designed to speed up um, our end goal, which was at the time 200% scanning and 165% tailing. Um, so yeah, that that's worked really, really well for us. Um, yeah, we, we've achieved that plus some um, in the space of probably 10 years, you know, so we've got some pretty efficient ewes now at home and we know which ones they are, but um, for us, we reckon the next frontier is, is the commercial parentage. Um, being able to know what ewes are not only scanning well, but also bringing home good lambs. The technology's there, but the cost is also there. You know, so some, somewhere along the line, 
Um, we need it on a commercial scale, and I believe, you know, just from what we're hearing next door, um, you know, the efficiencies of having very high-performing sheep, you know, because it'll be still classed as, as one stock unit, or 1.2. Um, and then with the ewe lambs, um, what have I got there? Replacements based on weaning. Um, so yeah, so it, it, it all starts getting into interwoven there. Um, 46 kilos is our target weight for mating. Um, we can reverse engineer that too. We base it on X amount of days from weaning to to mating, and then um, we just take a standard figure of 150 grams a day, which is pretty achievable, and then we know what our weaning weight needs to be. So when we're, when we're selecting, um, anything below that weight um, comes off to the side and either gets very strongly preferentially fed if the numbers aren't already there, or um, it, it's down the road. Um, just another thing for our A and B flock, we just, uh, 2015, we, we did a body condition score versus kilograms. So we went back to the way and the use again just to um, see if we're on the right track with condition score versus scanning. Um, and in that, the A flock were um, relatively, well, a couple of kilos lighter than the B flock. But, um, and the body condition score was a touch lighter also but scanning a lot better, well, a bit better. Um, and the scanning efficiency was, was better as well. So we, we knew we were on the right track when we started seeing that sort of data. I'm pushed here. <laughs> so these are um, some of our production targets that we are looking, you know, that we're doing today. Um, we like to have the use at 3.2 um, condition score going to the ram, hoggets 43 plus to sort of get us in around that 46 kilos. And we've got this scanning capped at a max of 200%. Um, for us, we, we've still got a bit of work to do on, on triplets. Um, so we're, 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 with rams now, we're concentrating on purchasing rams now of survivability and growth rates within the maternal line. Um, with lambing, um, our goal back back in right when we started was at 150 per cent and 75 per cent prime at weaning. Now that was at weaning or pre weaning. Weaning is a dollar based figure rather than a weight based carcass weight because in our budget we sort of budget for X amount of dollars, um, and if the budget's working and we're getting those dollars, they're gone. You know, very efficient lamb. Um, and lambing at 100% hoggets, lambing 100% of the hoggets and 50 of them away prime. Um, we got their carcass weights and the hoggets just as that's sort of where we wanted to head. We wanted a good growthy lamb there. So currently we're, um, last year we were, well the season just gone 162, um, scanned 198 and the hoggets at 113. So we're, we're sort of bounced our way up, up the lines there. Um, so then just on the land side of things, we've just, there again, we've just picked out one thing that we feel has helped our business um, immensely is, is three weather stations. Um, we put them in three different soil types around the farm, which are our main soil types. And um, because we wanted to know, we wanted to be specialist dryland farmers. You know, we needed to know stuff. We needed to know when it was getting dry. Um, we need, and you can tell that visually on top when it's going brown. But the weather stations give you a bit of warning. You know, things that things are not um, going to respond even if you do get a good rain. Um, but there are things that you sort of learn. So um, we did the. So that's a graph there of, of our moisture strips, or two of our moisture strips. Um, so at the time we were measuring grass um, on each site, weather station site, um, relative to the water that fell and the moisture in the ground. And we, we come up with some good data there on, on um, how much grass we could grow through the season. We did that for three years and, and create a really robust um, feed cycle through the year, which um, 
actually prompted us to put our lambing date back um, to, fit, to fit that curve. So we, we lamb typically in around the 20th of September. We're definitely the last ones out of the blocks in the district, but um, we're probably, without big noting, probably one of the first in the processing plant. Um, it's just simply because the sheep don't, the lambs don't get a check. There's just no checking there. Um, so with the weather stations, they record soil temperature, moisture and rainfall, all accessible on the phone. Uh, we heard Richard talk about it earlier on this morning, um, exactly the same principle. Um, and then you'll see on the graphs there different colours. I'm not sure if you can actually see that. but um, So the, the colour at the top is saturation. So the ground's fully saturated. It's not really peaking on growth. Um, and then the next... Um, colour down is, is at optimal growth. So if you've got um, temperature right, soil temperature right, optimal growth will occur with a bit of sunlight. And then you start dropping into stress, which is sort of the early warning sign, and then the wilting point. When you get into the wilting point in the summer, you can have two inches of rain and it won't make much difference at all. So sometimes you think, oh, that's a good rain we've had, but it it doesn't really change a lot. Um, now, another thing we've used the soil moisture strips for is um, we can... I've just got a urea application that we put on on the 22nd of December 2018. Um, we can show what we did and what the result was. So in the top left screen um, is the soil temperature of, of the, um, the ground. Obviously, 22nd of December, it's definitely warm enough to put urea on. But, um, you know, it, it's a graph there that shows that it definitely was. Um, the graph down below it was the application on the Farm IQ land-based system of um, the, urea, the urea that we put on. Um, and then we've got the soil moisture strip on the top right, which um, highlighted that we were sort of just on saturation, but at optimal growth. So um, we were looking pretty good there. We knew that it wasn't going to run off or um, if we got a big rain event. And then um, we'd listened to the weather forecast and trusted what they said, and we got 13 mils of rain that night. Um, so right there, we can show anyone that wants to see it what we've done and, and the result. So, um, yeah, I'll pass. That, that, that just some real simple data collection that we've, that we've collected. So as we were going along this journey, um, you could appreciate that the Farm IQ system was still being built and we were collecting a lot of data and we had two babies and so this data wasn't getting put into the system till the evening and I tell you a word of a lie that this is how I felt at night time. Like it's a wonderful, wonderful um, information we were getting but by no means of the imagination was it easy. There were nights <laughs> where I threw my toys out of the cot. I hated every minute of it but... Um, we persevered, and I'm glad we persevered because it has made huge, huge inroads for our business. Um, if there's one thing I could really push is if you're wanting to go down this journey, really choose what it is you're wanting to record, but more importantly, why you're actually wanting to record that data because when you've just got that much, it becomes a minefield and it, it, it makes life pretty difficult. But the, the effort that you actually put into, into this process, the rewards you get out of it are really worth it and it, and it leaves all that guessing at the door. So, um, yeah, it's, it's something we're thankful to Farm IQ and Gents and Travis, who was a big part of, of our journey. But um, yeah, don't, and, and our steering group, they were awesome. Even if you just have them on speed dial, it, it just, it shares, shares the frustrations, it, it shares the learnings, and um, yeah, it really worked for us. So thank you.